Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to install Cisco Unity Express. And if you saw the previous video, we installed the Cisco Call Manager Express or the Unified Communications Manager Express, whichever you want to call it. And we downloaded all the necessary files, installed the licenses, and we set up some DNs and some ePhones so the phones could call each other. But now what we're going to focus on is the AIM CUE module that we put into the 2801 router here and this will allow the phones to have voicemail associated with it and also auto attendant features and the purpose of this video is I'm studying for the CCNA voice exam which I'll be taking in a few days and I just want to put some material together that I've learned and want to share with you in case you're doing the same studies or just curious on how this works and the source of the material is from the CCNA voice official exam certification guidebook and if you're like me and like to get hands-on experience before you actually take the exam the couple things I just want to point out is that there's two items that needs to be done for the CUE to work properly and get all the settings transferred properly and downloaded which are omitted from the book for some reason and I don't know why I had to go out and search on my own so we'll, we'll cover those things once we get there so without further ado let's begin so to kick this off let's start off by bringing up our telnet session and we're technically consoled in with the access server so we'll go into enable mode and if you watched the previous video we did when I say previous video I mean if you watched the series on the Cisco call manager Express that we set up. Uh, we did everything through the command line and we didn't enable any of the web interfaces at all. So we will be using the web interface for Unity Express. So to allow CME to interact and vice versa, we're going to enable the web interface. So the first thing we want to do is go into global config and we will type in IP HTTP server to enable it. You can do HTTPS if you prefer, but we'll just stick with HTTP for now. And then we'll set the authentication for the local user. So we'll say HTTP, HTTP authentication, local. And if you saw the previous video, we also downloaded all the CME files. And that created some subdirectories and directories on the flash drive. And so what we want to do is point the subdirectory that has all the GUI files for CME. So to do that, we'll say IP HTTP path and put in flash colon forward slash GUI where the those GUI files were entered. We then want to go over to the telephony service and by default you cannot change or add DNs and you also can't change the time so from, from the web that is so we want to change that so to do that we'll say DN web edit if I can type and we'll do time web edit. Now we want to create a username and password for authentication. So what we'll do is we'll say web admin and you have a choice between system or customer. And in this case we want to use system and we'll say name, we'll call it voicemail. And uh, then we can do password or secret. As you can see here, um, it's best practice to use secret so we'll do that. And from here we'll give you if you want to do unencrypted or encrypted and that just means on how you're going to enter it so since we don't know the hash that it's going to use well maybe you do but I don't we'll, we'll go ahead and use uh, unencrypted and then once you hit the enter key it will encrypt it for you so we'll just use the password of Cisco and now we're ready to move on to the CUE specific configuration alright let's clear the screen here and go back out to privilege mode and we'll do a show IP interface brief and here you can see that uh, we have the service engine and the service engine is what we'll be configuring that's the AIM CUE module uh, for the voicemail and according to the Cisco documentation they're saying the best practice is to use the loopback some might find it easier to just assign an IP address to the service engine with its own subnet but since you know my focus is on the exam I went ahead and uh, made a loopback because that's how they want it. The only difference really is uh, there's a little bit more work you have to do as far as adding a static host route, but other than that it's not too bad. So let's go into global config and we'll go to interface service engine 0 slash 0 and the first thing we're going to do is uh, associate it with that loopback interface so we'll say IP unnumbered and we'll say loopback zero. Then we need to assign the service module an IP address. So we'll say service module 
IP address and we'll give it 192.168.2 or excuse me 5.2 and 255 255 255 252 and then we need to give it a default gateway so we'll say service module IP default gateway and we'll give that one the 192.168.5.1 and no shut not not shut no shut sorry I can't type today folks okay and that should bring the interface up and that should be all you need to do for the basic configuration before we're gonna actually get into the CUE module and as I said we also need to go in and add that IP route or static host route so we'll say IP route and uh, we'll say 192.168.5.2 and all 255s because we're talking about just that one host and we're going to send that to the service engine 0 slash 0 that should be good for your static host and now we can jump into the service module itself alright so I cleared the screen again and to get to the service module we are going to type in service module service engine 0 slash 0 Ooh, I see I'm telling you I can't type today service engine 0 slash 0 and if we hit the question mark you can see there's a number of different things you can do from this point you can reload it reset it session shut down check the status and all that but in this case we're doing a session because it's going to be like basically a telnet session so we'll type in session and press enter we are now in the CUE module and uh, by default it doesn't have the CME CUE name it's already been configured but from this stage you can run your configurations, you can install new software, you can restore it to factory default which is what we're about to do right now. So to begin we want to do a factory restore so what we're going to do is take it offline. How do we do that? You guessed it. Type in offline. And it gives you it's the end of the world message, no one will be able to do anything. We'll just say yes. We want to go offline. Once you're offline, it has the offline here in parentheses, so you know you're off in offline, and then you can issue the offline commands, such as restore factory defaults, or default. Press enter, and it's going to be, are you sure? It's going to erase everything, it's irreversible. We're going to say yes. Press enter, and this is on a Linux platform, so once it wipes everything out, it's going to boot a Linux kernel, and from there you can watch the boot process. Now, as exciting as the boot process is, I'm sure not everyone actually wants to watch it. So I will go ahead and pause this video and come back as soon as this finishes. All right, the boot process is complete, and now we are presented with the configuration prompt. Now, unlike the regular iOS default configuration prompts that we always say no, this one we're going to say yes, and it's actually mandatory. So we can just say, oops, we can just say yes or why and it will ask are you sure yes we're sure and now the host name this is where you can put in whatever you want put in your domain do you want to use DNS we'll say no it's are you sure yeah we're sure and then for the NTP 192.168.1.1 that's one of my main routers that's set up as a master and it says it's found the server so we can skip the second one we don't need to and now it's demographic information so we're going to say we're in the Americas and where we're in the United States so we'll type in 47 and as for your time zone I'm mountain time so put in 17 and is this correct yes it is so we'll press 1 and now it's going through the initial uh, boot process and this is another piece that takes quite a while particularly on the AIM module from what I've read the network modules of CUE are a lot faster so this waiting here usually has to get up to around 250 or more for it to complete the booting so we'll sit here and wait and then uh, I'll pause the video and come back once this finishes booting